everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk about one of my favorite 20x20 flight controllers, the Akon F4 2020. The reason I am a big fan of this particular flight controller is, for the most part, it's just like me. It gives you exactly what you need, it gets straight to the point with absolutely no BS. And that's what I like. There are absolutely no gimmicky features in this flight controller. It features an STM32 F405 processor and all the UARTs you could ever want for connectivity. If you think that this flight controller might be something that you're interested in, I'm going to have a link in the description with a custom discount code just for you guys. So not only can you get an awesome flight controller, but you're going to get a little bit of a deal on it too. If you're interested, make sure you check out the description. Otherwise, what do you say we get this thing out of the box, we jump over to the overhead camera, and we take a look at why this thing is as awesome as it is. Right away, one of my absolute favorite things in the world, a plastic reusable box. I love it when manufacturers use these. They're incredibly handy to keep around. As a matter of fact, I've got another one right here hanging on to some standoffs and screws for me so I don't lose them for a current build that I'm working on. Pretty nice. Let's open this thing up and see what we got. Our little baggie here. We had a couple different harnesses. One that's a little bit more universal depending on your installation. Maybe you're using this flight controller as a standalone and you're wiring it up to a PDB or Maybe all-in-one ESC that has pads on it, so that's cool. But we also get another pre-configured cable, which I believe you're typically going to be using with an all-in-one ESC. If you do use this cable, it is critically important to make sure that your pinouts are going to match on both sides before you plug it in. If you don't do that, you will fry something. So just keep that in mind when you're connecting your flight controller to an all-in-one ESC. Make sure that all these connections line up on both sides. Of course, we got some rubber gummies. They give us an extra one. It's always nice. These things went for a little ride when I tried to take them out of the package. So if you lose one or you damage it, you got a spare. I'm going to get the flight controller out of the way so we can get the instructions out. This instruction sheet is pretty good. It's going to explain to you all the UARTs and suggested usage. And it's also giving you a clear diagram of how the board is laid out and what all your solder pads are. I'm going to show you on the board itself what all these connections are and what's great about it. Let's start at the front with our camera and VTX connections and we'll work our way backwards on the board. The first connection that is really important to me nowadays is camera control. This allows you to configure your FPV camera and the settings inside. That way you don't need to plug in that joystick which is always cumbersome and difficult to work with. This feature here makes it very quick and easy to change the settings inside your FPV camera. And I find myself much more likely to change the configuration, it being so easy to do with the OSD and my transmitter. Next, of course, we have video in. We have our positive power and both our ground for the camera. And right behind this, we actually have a selectable pad, which if we short two of these together, you don't want to short all three, but if you do the two on the right or the two on the left, it's going to configure your camera positive output for either a 5 volt or VBAT output. A lot of modern cameras accept a wide range of voltage input, and if you can power your camera off the battery, it's going to help save resources for your 5 volt regulator. As we roll over to the VTX side, we have ground, our power in, our video out, that is going to connect to our VTX. And then over here we have which is labeled T1. This is actually uh, soft serial TX1. And this is the connection that you're going to use for either smart audio or tramp to control and configure your VTX. Just like the camera side, we have a selectable voltage output for the power on the VTX. We can bridge one side and get 5 volts or we can bridge the other and get VBAT. Personally, myself, I like to power my VTXs off of VBAT. I always purchase high voltage units. By doing that, I feel I'm relying more on the filtering within the VTX and not so much in the flight controller. Most high-end VTXs should do a little bit better job at that than the flight controller is going to. We've got our boot button. That can be critical for flashing firmware. Maybe you've accidentally corrupted or bricked your installation of Betaflight. 
you might need that to install software. That's where it is. These first four pads up here on the top are UART4. We have both a TX and an RX pad. And underneath that we have UART2, again with the TX and RX pad. Both of these are pretty much here for general use. I will typically use TX2 for crossfire. And I have an interesting build down the road where I am gonna use TX4 on this flight controller to do some advanced settings in a VTX, but we'll talk about that down the road. After my UART pads, these are your typical receiver connections. This one here is labeled telemetry. Essentially, this is half of the UART3 port that you would use to connect the telemetry wire from your receiver. For example, smart port telemetry or your F port input from your FlySky receiver. The next one below that is UART1RX. That's the pad that you're going to typically use for your receiver input. Whether you're using Spectrum or FR Sky, it doesn't matter. That's going to be the pad you're using. Below that, we have 3.3 volts, a 5 volt pad, and also ground. So depending on your receiver, you might either use 5 volts or 3.3 volts. And on the top here, we have our LED buzzer minus a 5 volt and a ground pad. So essentially, if you're installing a buzzer or an LED strip, you're going to use a combination of these pads to configure that. On the end of the flight controller, we have our all-in-one port. The pins are as follows, ground, VBAT, ESC1, ESC2, ESC3, ESC4. We have an input for analog current sensing. And then the final pin is half of soft serial 2. That connection is available for ESC telemetry. Flipping the board over, we don't have too much going on on the backside. Two additional pads, one for signal five and the other for signal six. Maybe you're building a hex or maybe you're going to remap these for something. It's nice that we're here. This guy right here, this is the actual 405 processor that runs the flight controller. And this little guy here, this is your OSD. So those are the general connections on the board. I'm gonna plug it into Betaflight real quick because I wanna show you the availability of all the serial ports because they do really all exist on this tiny thing. Uh, but like I said, there's not much to this thing. It's literally straight into the point and that's what you get. So let's look at it in Betaflight. I'll connect it up in Betaflight. I'm just gonna shoot over to my ports tab and look at all this. It is a USB over VCP board. Make sure you never turn this off. Even though Betaflight doesn't really let you nowadays, but just stay away from this line altogether. UART1, this is for our standard receiver. UART2, I currently have configured for Crossfire. UART3 is our receiver telemetry port. I'm not using that one. UART4, again, this is a full available UART with both RX and TX pads. We can use this for a variety of things. Maybe GPS, but down the road, I'm going to use it for an advanced VTX control. You'll see what I have planned. We also have Soft Serial 1 and Soft Serial 2. Soft Serial 1, you can see I have configured for smart audio, and Soft Serial 2 is still available because the ESC that I'm currently using on this build is not 32-bit, and it does not support telemetry. Before we get out of beta flight, there's one more feature on this board that I want to point out, and that it does have a small onboard flash for black box logging. Look at this, free space, 16 megabytes. That's pretty awesome. Hopefully, with that little bit of an explanation, you're gonna see why I like this flight controller so much. There's not a lot to it, but it offers you every feature that you would ever need. Also without the gimmicks. Like that's a big thing to me too. None of these dual gyro camera switcher nonsense. Just straight up flight controller because all we wanna do is fly. Like I mentioned earlier, I do have a link and a coupon code if, if you're interested in purchasing this Akon mini flight controller. However, there's a small catch. The code is only good till November 15th, 2019, and it's also only good for the first 10 people that grab one of these up. But I mean, hey, it's pretty awesome that I got a custom code, right? All right, that's all I got for today. I hope you pick one of these up so you can see how awesome it is for yourself. Thank you to Banggood for sending me this sample for the review and making it possible to do this video. Huge thanks to Hot Dog FPV. Those guys have been keeping me warm for a long time now. Right, well, that's all I got for today. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>